Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to put one foot in front of the other. Ah. Hi guys, C Chronicles here. Welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I post fragrance related content on this platform in case you're here for the very first time. Now, if you like that style of content, please do consider joining us by subscribing. And to those who are returning, thank you so much guys for the continued support. Kindly check out my second channel, C Chronicles Unscripted. The link to that channel is in the description of this page. The description is at the top there where you're going to see my photograph and it says C Chronicles Talking Sense. Just below that, you're going to find two links one that is going to take you to see chronicles unscripted and the second one is going to take you to a paypal donate link in case you'd like to donate anything at all towards the purchases of some of the fragrances on this channel because this channel relies only on adsense it is not a sponsored channel now while i'm at that let me just uh, clarify that yes latafa did reach out to me but they haven't sent anything at all as soon as they do send something i will definitely let you know guys uh today i am focusing on these two fragrances guys uh vibrant a Vertiver Delight uh, by Amir's line of Paris Corner uh, versus Val de Freak uh, from By Riddle. Now, when I unboxed uh, this fragrance, I uh, think about two or three weeks ago, somebody in the comment section wanted me to do a compare and contrast. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. This is the packaging for this particular fragrance, but please do take note that it's been repackaged. It used to come in a box, but it's just still the same thing. Maybe it's a way of uh, Paris Corner saving on the packaging. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to spray this one on this arm, right? This is Vibrant Vertiva Delight by Paris Corner, inspired by Baldur Freak. Do take note that I have been um, wearing these fragrances for about three, four days. I've already, I've had this one for a while. It is just this one that I've added to my collection and I've been trying them out. So this is not a first impressions. I'm also going to put the bottles of the fragrances there in picture form so that you don't get lost while we do this uh, review, right? Now, these two fragrances are definitely similar in terms of how they vibe. So do expect uh, white florals in both fragrances, a slight sweetness there, a citric tone to both fragrances and a touch of aromaticness. Um, I know there is Vertiver, Tajets, um, what else is there? Okay, I, I didn't bother with the notes, guys, so I'm, I'm not going to throw notes there, but I know for certain uh, that there is Vertiver, and there is, the reason why I'm zooming on the Vertiver, those Tajets and the black currant is, I think this is where these fragrances kind of off, maybe speak a little bit different, right? The opening, guys, of Baldur Freak is going to have like a piercing tang there of the black currant, so it's going to be the black currant that is kind of doing a little bit too much there in the opening, uh, weighing in there with the spiciness and a, and, and, a, and a little kick there, a tang that can somewhat be, say for instance, uh, called minty, if you will. Okay, so that is what you expect from the opening of this fragrance. And when it comes to this one, it kind of is a very heightened there on the lemon and bigamite. It has seemed to have that citric nature doing the most there in the opening. So that is what to expect from these two as soon as you spray them. Uh, but those differences are not too much enough to say, mm, don't buy this one, it's offside. No, I'm just saying, I think it's just the proportions in here, but undoubtedly, Paris Corner must have taken this mix and worked with it. Uh, they just, maybe it's just the dilutions or uh, the addition of the, say, the black currant that's a little bit, uh, you know, more thickened in this than this or whatever. But at the end of the day, they just draw to the same uh, thing. These are not fragrances that I would recommend to somebody who loves beastly performing fragrances. So if you're one of those people that say, oh, I want my fragrance to wear me. I want my fragrance to take over the moment. I want to walk in a room and everybody turn her head their heads and say oh wow that's not what you're going to get from this these are fresh clean fragrances okay they are going to interpret the same so i'm not going to say buy this one because it's thicker than this i'm just going to say if you love intimate fragrances to an extent and some are even going to say skin sense to an extent then that is what you're going to get from these fragrances uh the dna in both screams summer spring that sort of thing i'm not going to reduce these ones to say this is how long this one lasts why is because it's just going to depend on your nasal palette these are fragrances that 
are going to be enjoyed by different people differently, right? Because the DNA in itself is soft, it's clean, it's floral, it's citric, it's fresh, that sort of thing. And those sort of DNAs tend to differ in interpretation from one person to the other. Some people have a stronger nasal palate that will say, regardless of a fragrance being very soft, they can smell it the whole day, they can smell it for 12 hours, they can smell it for six hours, while some will say it's gone in 60 seconds. So this is why I'm saying I'm not gonna reduce these ones to, oh, expect a lasting power of five hours, for instance, because they give me that intimate vibe where, uh, you know, where I often say, if you are in a three meter, four, five meter scent bubble, people are gonna smell you. This I'm gonna say in a one and a half meter scent bubble, that is where people are gonna smell you. They both have that wrap up of a mysterious lux tone to them. So in as much as I say fresh, soap, soapy, lemony, that sort of thing, I do not expect kind of like a basic type of maybe gym scent or something. There is like a lux wrap up uh, to this particular DNA, right, now, right? To draw it to the differences, and this was just me pushing it, right? I'm gonna say it is the interpretation of the black current and this one that makes this one take a somewhat of a minty tone. And that lemon and lime that makes this one take like a citric tone. Uh, but in the dry down where, you know, the opening has come and gone and uh, you are now in, a, you know, in that in that place where you're just enjoying your fragrance, uh, it's going to be the vertiver that kind of uh, pulls slight differences in this, okay? The vertiver in uh, the Paris Corner one kind of kind of leans lemon grassy there. And because it does lean lemon grassy, uh, this then becomes a fragrance that dries down lotion. Okay, so uh, that is what I can pick out as maybe the slight differences there. And then in Baldo Freak, uh, the vertiver in here comes across as deep and earthy, uh, even slightly woodsy. However, uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't stray that much. It just makes the dry down of this one maybe amped up in the soapiness. So why I say these fragrances are similar very similar is if you look at lotion and soap you know what i mean so the differences are basically the same and if you wore either i don't think anybody will be able to smell the difference guys including yourself so it's going to really depend on what you prefer whether you believe in clones or not i don't know but it's to me you know gonna boil down to whether you want to save your coins or not otherwise i don't see anything distinctly different here except for just how the proportions in the notes into way, way later on both of them turn into like a musky uh a musky wrap up of everything so that is what i can say guys as the differences the dna's in this scream uh feminine however because they have that vertiver tone men can totally wear uh, these fragrances if they want right but they just have that quintessential like dna that a lot of women usually claim so do remember that it is just that black car in there that is somewhat doing the most some people are even going to get a slight fruitiness in this a slight tang in this and of course that soapy wrap up uh, for some is going to come across as overwhelmingly soapy uh, but at the end of the day if you wore either nobody is going to really notice much of a difference and then this one is going to take that uh, lemon and bergamot kind of twist there with like that uh with that uh with that uh lotion wrap up uh, less of a tang in this one less of a tang in this one but definitely a fresh uh, a fresh floral clean wrap up which is exactly what you you know get from this spring summer appropriate so yeah guys that is what i can say about these two fragrances i think paris corner did nail uh the dna here they didn't stray much like i said to you initially that i literally had to dig you know to to kind of come up with uh, di the differences here otherwise if you just spray your fragrances for enjoying them they're just gonna vibe the same uh if we have to be honest see chronicles is my name thank you so much guys for joining me today let's meet in the comment section where we'll obviously discuss more about fragrances let me know if you have these fragrances or if you have one or the other uh let me know would you purchase the clone or would you purchase the uh original fragrance i would just want to know guys and please do turn on post notifications on both my channels that way you get to be notified anytime i upload a video meanwhile like and share this one guys and remember that smelling good is a form of good manners cheers